This is Collection Earth, review of Sailor Moon number 7. And like always, when you buy just one of these books, you're really getting a book and a half. This is a big chunk of the Sailor Moon S story arc right off the bat. And it's a very thick book, and I very much recommend it for Hotaru fans. Now, there's a lot of content that a lot of people are going to find questionable. If you've not been following the series to this point, let me catch you up to speed. This is not a children's comic. Don't ever let anybody tell you this is for children. And you'll see why as we go along. But first, let's just take a look at the cover. As you can see, I have my Japanese print of the book and my English print right here. And, as you can see, I'm also a Walmart shopper. I know, I know, but what can you do? Shit economy. And as we can see, there's a bit of a difference in the cover here. A lot of people wrote in on my older videos and said that what I was looking at was not a complete color difference, that it was just a printing error on some of my Japanese books. I'm really not buying it anymore, because look at this. Uranus's skirt color is exactly the same. There's a slight difference with the Japanese print, but it's very slight. You've got to be anal to find this. The bows are the same color. The sword is the same color. Her skin color is not. This is not a printing error. Somebody at Kodansha is actively making these girls look a lot more healthy, and I, for one, am a fan of it. And I just want to point that out. Thank you very much. I hope I don't see any more snarky emails about it. On both covers, there's a lot of great detail work. I mean, look at that. You can see little wisps in her hair. That's just so cute and beautiful. Lovely artwork, as always. And this time, they got the spines pretty close. On some of the earlier books, there was a bit of a color difference. There's a slight one here. The English print is a lot more green in it. But this time it's a lot closer. And on the back, we're treated to Chibi Uranus. Not very often that they take liberties with making her look cute, but this is definitely one instance where they do. And again, we have our proper age stamp, ages 13 and up. And yeah, I have to agree with that reading this book. As usual, oh, I flipped it around like that. We have several pages that are in color. We have a very big scene here with everybody in bathing suits. And then we have this really awesome picture of the outer senshi. And this nice little picture here. I like this because you can see Chibiosa and her mother with the same color hair. This doesn't happen very often, I just really like it. And then we have our opening flap. For the English print, they again cleaned up a lot of the artwork. Very nicely done. You can see a lot of details, specifically in Pluto's shawl. Uh, sorry for the shaking in the camera. They brightened up the colors here, too. So there's more green in Neptune. It's very lovely. And again, I just like seeing mother and daughter looking the same. And the first page is, again, on shiny paper. I don't even care about that anymore. I also want to point out, too, before I forget, that as always, we get our cover spoiler, because Uranus is not supposed to have this particular outfit until later. We also have a spoiler in the back of the book. These two books just got listed on Amazon, and if you are a fan of mine, you will head on over to my Facebook page. I do have the links for all 12 books. Now I'm just waiting for the short stories. Now I've mentioned in earlier videos that while the Tokyo Pop and the Kodansha prints of Sailor Moon are pretty close together dialogue-wise, close uh, uh, more towards the Sailor Moon S arcs, there have been a couple of changes. This is one that I feel needed to be made because if you read it in Japanese, it just makes more sense. Now, this is the Tokyo Pop print. Uh, Sailor Pluto returns to life, of course, and she returns to action as Sailor Pluto. And in the Tokyo Pop print, it, uh, Chibiosa's first line is translated as that husky voice, that attack. I always 
thought that husky was kind of a mean word. I mean, this is your friend here. She just came back from the dead, and you called her husky? I don't know why Tokyo Pop did that. Well, this is corrected in Kodansha. If I can get the camera to behave itself there. And this translates literally from the Japanese book. This time the line is, that attack, that deep voice. And of course, if you're a fan of the first anime, I'm so glad I get to say that, you already know that Setsuna had a very deep voice there, too. So this makes a lot more sense, and I'm glad they made this change. Not too many changes other than that. And I already got an email about this, so I figured I might as well address it. Yes, abhorrent is actually misspelled several times in this book. There, I found one grammatical mistake. Are we happy now? Can we move on with our lives? I really don't want to see any more emails about the grammatical mistakes. Kodansha is doing the best they can with a predominantly Japanese staff. I think they're doing a very good job, so please spare me the details about the grammar. Oh boy, I was dreading doing this part. Okay, so I promised you guys in the last video that I was going to address these two. Now, on the basis of technicality, they count as one person. That's why they're the Witches 5 and not Witches 5.5 or Witches 6. Go ahead and figure that one out. They're also kind of sisters, so you can play with that as much as you like. That's not the problem, okay? At, at, this is Sailor Moon. We're kind of used to this now. Uh, the issue is their names. Now, I hope you can see this as clearly as possible. I did put the HD filter on. This is their introduction in Japanese. And if anybody can read that, awesome. I'm, I'm going to try really hard to translate this. But keep in mind, it's a little bit difficult. And there's a reason why. Now... One of the girls is named Ciprin, and seemingly everybody can translate that the same. Every DVD I've seen, both bootleg and official from Cloverway, has her name as Ciprin, albeit with different spellings. It's her sister that's been the problem. You see, when Tokyo Pop got the books, they didn't know how to translate her name either, because seemingly mm, uh, didn't really make much sense. A lot of people criticized Tokyo Pop for what they did. Now, in the dub version of the anime, they said her name really fast, and I can't actually tell you how they translated it. I'm just going to say it's Pitalol, because that's how fast they said it. It was once and never again. This is what Tokyo Pop did. Petite roll. Petite roll. I'm guessing they did this because, well, she, like Sailor Moon, has a role in her head. Odango. And maybe it's because that seemed to make sense at the time. But it's a, it was a difficult change. A lot of people hated it. So you must be asking, well, what did Kodansha do? They have a Japanese staff, and they're a lot better at reading Japanese than certainly I am. So, what did they do? Um, well, they did the best that they could. They named her... Oh, boy. Pitalol. Now, this is actually the name they gave her when they subbed the anime officially. Pitalol. I have seen many people try to translate this name. I have seen so many spellings, it makes my head spin. But that's her name. We're just going to go with Pitalol from now on. And again, I apologize if, you know, that comes across as weird. I'm trying to do the best I can, but this is not a very easy character. On the upswing, she dies really easy, so it's not like we have to memorize this or anything. As I mentioned on the Moon Sisters Facebook page, this is a really good book if you like Haruka. Not only is there a lot of her in this book, but she has more of a personality in this than she did in the anime. But here's something that I wanted to point out. Haruka and Michiru live together. They're about 16 at this point in the series. They're 16 years old. They don't have parents to answer to. Nobody exactly knows what 
if anything became of them or if they even had parents, they just showed up. That's the end. And that's very interesting because over here, we don't allow that kind of thing. We don't allow teenagers to live on their own, but they're not the only ones. Uh, Makoto lives on her own as well, and she's she turns 15 in the S arc. Uh, this part is really pretty funny, too. Uh, this is how Tokyo Pop handled it, where Haruka and Michiru mention how much they have for rent. They translate Haruka's monthly, monthly rent to $2,000. And Makoto is like, my rent is only $500. Where did you get the money from? Now, keep in mind, Tokyo Pop printed these books right about 2000 So the yen to English dollars conversion was a little bit different back then. With Kodansha, they decided to do something a little bit different. They translate her rent as a million yen a month. And Mokato's rent is 50,000 yen a month. So you might be wondering, well, how much are they really paying? Well, there's a translation note in the back for that. In the translation notes, they list Haruka's rent as $13,000 a month. Well, while Makoto is paying $650 a month. So you can see that the prices have gone up since Tokyo Pop printed the book, and it's pretty amusing to think that a couple of teenagers can gather that money up together. You know, you only get to see this in something like Sailor Moon. In America, we'd call Child Protective Services and stick all three of them in foster care. Talk to most yourselves about how well that would work. Now, I did mention that this is a very big book for Hotaru fans. And with that comes a warning. If you follow my videos, you know that I usually give these warnings when I find something a little bit unsavory for the parents out there. If you have kids, go away. Tell them to go away. Tell them to skip ahead, watch something else, because, again, this is not a children's book. Okay, now that I've, I've warned you, I'm going to have to tell you this. There is a ridiculous amount of Hotaru nudity in this book. I'm not kidding. There is a lot of this. And yes, it was in the Tokyo Pop version as well. Uh, the reprint manga, they superimposed the planet Saturn over this frame. The rest of it isn't changed all that much. There's going to be a lot of this. And there's always a reason for it. Um, for half of this book, she's going to be dead. And you're going to be seeing her naked soul. The other half of this book, they explain that Hotaru is not entirely all human. There's no blood in there. There's a, there's a reasonable explanation for that. Her father is insane, and I really encourage you to read this book if you want to understand Hotaru a lot better. And in case you're curious, this is from the Tokyo Pop print. Now, I want to ask something, and go ahead and pick this apart if you want to. I will be monitoring the comments. Is there a reason why you, 